Welcome back to Games Revealed. I'm James and also Brink, and we are one. So today I want to talk about something that's been brought up multiple times in comments and other um, forums about SD card performance and namely like A1 versus A2, which is application performance classes. And I, I, I let's let's clear the air on those weird symbols brought to us by aliens, because there's no other person that would understand this or even uh, assume to put these type of weird symbols on our SD cards. So we're gonna we're gonna clear up a little bit of this and then talk about the A1 versus A2 topic. So before we get into it, make sure to like subscribe, bash that bell with your crowbar. Now, let's get into it. So let's uh, just clear the air on what these symbols mean real quick, right? So th you have a circle, almost circle or a U shaped uh, symbol with the number. Those are your speed classes and they're the right speed classes. You have UHS, which is ultra high speed, which is the U. That's the one you typically wanna try to shoot for, but there are cards like the SanDisk Ultra that have the uh, class 10, which will say 10 um, with the circle, that is 10 megabytes per second, while the class one of the Ultra, which is the U, is also 10 megabytes per second. That one's not gonna matter too much. Like I have, I use the SanDisk Ultra. I think it works fine for most stuff I need, like, uh, just playing games on my Steam Deck or in the phone. So that's the minimum I'd go. I wouldn't go any lower than those uh, classes. But then you also have the class three, which is 30 megabytes per second. Then you have capacity standards. These really don't matter that much, at least to the layman. Like you can see what capacity you have right there on the, on the card. So if you're looking at this uh, diagram, it has a 128 gigabyte card. That's what it is. Uh, the range is the SDXC which are that range is in the SDXC uh, standard name that it's from a 32 to a two terabyte, right? So you just know that ranges from there that that potentially this card could range from 32 to two terabytes in the options could doesn't often, but it could uh, have all those different um, range sizes doesn't once again, if you want a 512 gigabyte, get a 512 gigabyte. If you don't see an option for a 512 gigabyte or for like a terabyte, it Either they haven't built one or the standard doesn't allow for it. Okay, so then you have the video speed class. You have V30 on this card diagram or on the card and with the diagram. And the V30 just is like a confirmation that, hey, this can write at 30 megabytes per second on, for video. So if you're recording, you can expect an average 30 uh, megabytes per second write speed. Um, now, sequential write, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more in A1 and A2, which is like um, there's a minimum sustained that they, they, they try to hit. Um, then with the UHS bus speed, which is that little, it can be like this little I, a Roman numeral. And so it has one, two, and three in it. And it's UHS um, read. This is a read speed. So you have 104 megabytes per second with the one. Two is uh, 312 megabytes per second, and then the three is 624 megabytes per second. Don't think that you're going to get better performance with the three over the one on the Steam Deck specifically. It all depends on the read and the bus on the, the device that you're playing or using. So the UHS-1 is, is the, what's supported on the Steam Deck. If you try to do a UHS-2, it just will be capped at one 104 megabytes per second. So don't think that you get going with the UHS is going to save you anything in this run. Now, if you want a future proof for the Steam Deck 2, if they decide to up that bus speed, then the UHS 2 might be the one you want to go with. And um, so once again, I wouldn't sweat this. And oftentimes when you're buying these cards, it will tell you what the read speed is. Um, that being said, the read speed is the most important part, I think, of playing games on the Steam Deck where the write speed isn't nearly as important, You, especially if you don't plan on um, deleting and then re-downloading a bunch of games. Now, if you plan on doing that, maybe, but I really haven't had too many issues with the write speed with downloading multiple games on my SD cards. Um, and I have a various amount, including some older ones. Okay, now let's get into uh, the meat of this. The A1, A2 standard application performance class. This was, um, from my understanding, created for just essentially applications uh, such as, you know, 
throwing it onto a mobile phone, being able to access the video, the uh, maybe some files at the same time, accessing uh, or you know downloading games and playing them and applications onto the SD card. This is designed, and um, these cards are um, approved to work really well with applications. Um, and so with the Steam Deck, I recommend the A2. The, those IOPS, those re, re, uh, random read and write IOPS that you see on the diagram, those do matter. But um, what matters more is real real world tests. And the w cards I have in the description below is what I've gotten um, from other either YouTubers or articles. I have found that the real world tests for these are really good. And namely uh, for the Steam Deck, they're really good. And so uh, once again, go with the SanDisk Extreme if you want more write. Um, you know, higher write capabilities. Uh, if you are going to do what I normally do, what most people probably will be doing, which is reading and uh, game data to load your game, then the Samsung Evo Select is an awesome card, and I love it so far. It is definitely my favorite. Um, and then we have sustained sequential writes. This is, I would put this more at a minimum, meaning it needs to hit this bare minimum of 10 megabytes per second. And this is very important for video especially if you're doing video recording that sequential writing is going to give you a good experience or else you are going to have a bad experience trying to do good video recording that doesn't relate to the steam deck so much because it doesn't really uh do that type of thing but i guess if you're doing screen recordings and stuff like that that sequential writing is important and then also the random read and writes do matter especially if you're um, accessing let's say playing music off your card and also play let's say playing a game those are two different random areas in the card, and it does take a seek time and uh, can affect performance. And especially if you're trying to read and write to the same card, this is where these matter. That's why when A2, if you really plan on multitasking, the A2 standard is going to be better for you. And with this, I recommend going with the A2 as much as you can. Uh, so in the end, let's just finalize this thing. The UHS-1 and the A2 are the two most important, like are the things that I recommend shooting for when you're getting a card for your Steam Deck. That being said, uh, the A1 has worked fine for me. Definitely wor should work fine for just so, like if you're just planning on playing games and not trying to do anything multitasky or writing too heavy. I will also say just don't go cheap. I find that anytime you cheap out too much on, on like a technological thing um, without a good review, like with SD cards or battery banks, like you can regret it. Don't play around with your power. Don't play around with your memory. Um, and the power can affect the memory in, in some ways. So in this case, in the memory, you don't want to lose all, like let's say if there ends up being saves on your disk, let's say you're doing emulators, you don't want to lose that. And so definitely may, be mindful of your SD card and not getting a cheap one because there are some pretty cheap ones. They, they can sometimes be fake even, like their specs will be faked. It will be less performant. That's why I recommend they're a little bit more pricier, but I recommend going with a good brand name like we have in the description. So thank you guys for going over this, but let me know in the comments below, did I miss something on this? Is there something additional that you would like to put into the comments that uh, people reading will know? We always wanna make sure that everyone is informed on this. This is meant to be a very informative video and I wanted to clear the air on this because people are just, they're just not sure on what kind of memory card. And if I could give some assurance, just go with the Samsung uh, Evo Select, I love it. Um, obviously the San, the SanDisk Extreme is really good too, but I always wanna know what your thoughts are. And uh, for that, with that, let's end this. Thank you guys for watching. Check out my other videos and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Later!